Greetings, greetings, family. I uh, hope all is going well with you all, uh, wherever you are in the world, to all my brothers and sisters. Uh, I pray the Most High is increasing you in all truth, wisdom, and understanding, and that he is providing for you and protecting you in these times that we are in. So welcome back to another Teaching with the Way of Everlasting Ministries. Um, as you guys can see by the title, today I'm going to be discussing um, Building with Divine Prospect, also known as Ron Shields, No Shutting Down, Pre-New Testament Prophecy Fulfillment. All right, for those who know my current stand, uh, stance on the biblical prophecies, a lot of them um, that were associated with uh, Yeshua, Jesus, Yahweh Shai, Isaiah of the New Testament. Um, a lot of these prophecies have already been fulfilled in, in their time period, uh, you know, pertaining to those that were prophesying and the things that were going on. So I got the chance to uh, uh, talk with Ron Shields on his platform, uh, one of his Freestyle Friday sessions. Um, as we were talking about, he was he was going over, you know, Tanakh only, um, a Tanakh only view, um, you know, and and trying to build, trying to bridge the gap, right? So he could understand those from the Tanakh only side, and we can try to understand people from the Messianic side a little better. Um, so we got a chance to build, and so what I'm going to do first of all, I just want to thank uh, Brother Ron for the time and effort that he's put in uh it's a brother who's doing great things for the community to make things available and help us uh prosper as a people so i just want to thank you for that brother and thank you for having me on um i look forward to coming on again um, but i'm going to go ahead and play the video so that you guys can see the discussion that we had <clears throat> and then um i'm going to bring some clarity to my stance on the prophecy of zachariah which is what we were discussing all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and play this video. And then, um, like I said, I'm gonna bring a little bit of clarity at the end so that it's crystal clear exactly why I believe what I believe, all right? Two kings, shalom. All right, so last word is gonna go from uh, the way everlasting. What my brother, you have five minutes, okay? You have three to five minutes and then I'm gonna wrap up because I'm extremely tired, all right? Uh, my brother, Ivri, of Israel, uh, you came in pretty late on a tail end, so I'm not going to have enough time to allow you to speak now, but please, next time we open up the panel, please come on early so I can let you speak, my brother, okay? Uh, so go ahead the way everlasting. Hey, greetings, brother, greetings. Um, can you hear me all right? Yes, sir. All right, awesome, awesome, man. Appreciate you. Um, honestly, man, you're one of the, the most scholar people that you know we know and have on this side to bring in all the aspects that we need to get a complete understanding so i really appreciate all the work you do for the community and all the studying and all the effort you put in man it's really appreciated i appreciate that king all praise to the most high man all praise mm -hmm. all right so so my um you know because me personally i'm coming in from a to knock only angle as well um, and, you know, I know you brought out scriptures tonight, and so I'm going to do my best to, to address what you brought out, because I was going to touch on the New Testament, but I know, you know, you want to hear something on what you spoke about, you know, and so uh, you spoke about uh, Zechariah, and you talked about Joshua, right, coming out of, um, or what was it? Yeah, Joshua, the priest, the high priest, right? And so the most important thing for me is looking at this. I think when people start looking at prophecies, we lose track of what, what time period they're actually happening in and what's actually going on. And so I think you mentioned that they were looking at Joshua uh, being the one who was going to set up the third temple. It, it, am I correct on that or no? Uh, wouldn't be the third temple. It would be the second temple. Second temple. Oh, no. You're talking about okay. the future after that situation. Yeah. It would be the third temple, but it wouldn't be done by... by um, by Joshua because they were in the process of rebuilding the second temple. Okay, so, so you so, okay, so you, okay, so what what scripture did you use to to predict yeah. the future? Let me, um, let me bring it up. Hold on. Let me, okay, let me bring it up. All right, so that's Zechariah chapter six and. Um, 
that is that will be um that will be verse 12 where it says behold the man whose name is the branch and that whoever that branch person is he's not there yet but he shall branch out from his place and he shall build the temple of your hiwafe it is he who shall build the temple of your hiwafe and shall bear royal honor and shall sit and rule on his throne and there shall be a priest on his throne and the council of peace shall be between them both so we know this is not referring to what's going on in the immediate context because um nobody's sitting on a royal throne there's no king or no prince of israel here right that has been uh demolished all you have is at best is a subservient governor that nehemiah was one of those subservient governors right and Zerubbabel was also one of the subservient governors. So there was not a king sitting on a throne. Um, so whatever, whoever this branch is, at some future point, he's going to build a temple when the combination of priest and king is united on a single throne, right? Mm -hmm. So that couldn't be within the context of the second temple they're building, but they're mm -hmm. doing all these type of examples, right? And, and using these this figurative language and using Joshua as an example to show what will happen in the future. Okay, because when I was reading this, I, I saw it all as one. And what I've noticed is that I see, I see sometimes, like recently I had a discussion with somebody and they literally took, in the middle of a verse, they literally switched it up to say, okay, we were talking about Solomon and um, he was comparing it to uh, Yeshua. And then in the middle of the verse, he said, this no longer applies to Yeshua. It only now applies to Solomon. And it didn't make sense because when you, for instance, looking at this, when you read it straightforward, I'm just going to read from verse 9 um, down to 14. Mm -hmm. It says, and the word of the Most High came unto me, saying, take of them of the captivity, even Heldai and Tobiah and Jedidiah, which are come from Babylon, and come, uh, come thou the same day and go into the house of Josiah, the son of Zephaniah, uh, take silver, uh, then take silver and gold and make crowns and set them upon the head of Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, and speak unto him, saying, Thus speaketh the Most High of hosts, saying, Behold, the man whose name is the branch. So it looks like this, the, the branch, this name, the branch, is being associated with Joshua, the son of Josedek. And so I'm not seeing how all of a sudden, like, it just switched to being a whole different person when he's literally telling them. So, be so, when, so when that term branch is used elsewhere, who is it referring to? It's referring to Joshua the high priest? Well, I'm, I'm just talking about in this, in this case scenario, what we're reading right here, it, mm -hmm. it clearly, this is who he's talking to. And then it says, and he shall grow up out of it. He shall go, grow up out of his place. He shall build the temple of the most high. And it says, even he shall build the temple of the, of the Most High, and he shall bear the glory, and he shall sit and rule upon his throne, and he shall be a priest upon his throne. And, so where, and, so where, where is that taking place at? Do you have anything else that's showing that Joshua the high priest is fulfilling that? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I actually do. Yeah, yeah, give me a verse. Let's, let's look uh, at it real quick. Ezra chapter 6. Okay, let's go to Ezra 6. Ezra 6, 14. Okay. All right, go ahead. Okay, and it says, and the elders of the Jews uh, builded and they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah, the son of Edo, which we, who we just heard. Uh, and they builded and finished it according to the commandment of the Most High of Israel and according to the commandment of Cyrus and Darius and Artaxerxes, king of Persia. So we do see the, the finish, um, we do see the finishing of the building and that prophecy coming, uh, coming to completion. And so I'm, for me, like the biggest part is what I see a lot of Christians do, even when it comes to New Testament prophecy or prophecies, they say Yeshua fulfilled in the New Testament is they take them out of context. They, they cherry pick, you know, um, verses and then. Or, or no, wait, so wait, so, so I get you. So my question to you is, mm -hmm. can you show me where that full prophecy is being fulfilled by Joshua, the high priest? I don't, you got to show me where he's, he's reigning on a throne as a priest and a king. That's not, that's not in Ezra 6, 14. There's, there's no mention of that being fulfilled anywhere. Well, it's, it's, well, the building of the temple is, is associated with uh, Joshua right here. So the fact that they just said 
that everything was built according to that. Um, and but what about the royal element? Where's the royal element being exemplified well, through, through Joshua the high priest? Well, all, all we can all we can do because we know right here actually this is the at the point when he's actually becoming the priest right here. So no, he, just, that was done. That was done chapters before. I read chapter three. He was already the priest at that point. So what I'm saying is. If there is a scepter, which has to do with ruling and the royalty, the word royal is there, that has to be demonstrated that it was fulfilled somewhere. I don't, I don't, I'm saying, I'm not saying you're wrong as far as the building of the temple. I'm saying, what about the other part of it? Where is that fulfilled at anywhere? Well, we, you just said right now that it was fulfilled. Like Joshua himself is the high priest. So if, 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 if Zechariah now made Joshua the high priest, and it was acknowledged right right here in uh, in this chapter, well, Zechariah Zechariah didn't Zechariah is a prophet, so he didn't make him anything. Well, he didn't he make just, him, but he just yeah. he filled his his role in in the you know crowning. I guess it says as as that was what he was directed. So he was told to crown Joshua right here. So at that point, Joshua has now become like the king at this point. So now it's him finishing the building of the temple. So all that has taken place. So I don't see how this can be turned into a futuristic prophecy because we just witnessed everything according to the word that all this has been taking place. Well, so I, I just, but we don't see where he's sitting and ruling from a throne. Well, it would have been the rebuilding and then him going into, um, I mean, just the whole process. Like it, we don't see literally it says, um, Joshua was in, you know, um, on the throne, but we just see it right here where the Most High pretty much told Zechariah to crown Joshua, right, and make and make him, all right, to rule. So I don't, I'm seeing it already fulfilled. It's it's being fulfilled right here, so, even, right, even so though we don't see, it, even, even even though we don't see it literally, like it's uh -huh. saying, okay, Joshua, now he's sitting on the throne and he's ruling, but we literally see it right here played out and then it tells so Joshua, me what, wait 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 so <clears throat> is this in alignment with let's say the prophecies about Dawid and his lineage or are you talking about this is a separate king altogether that's ruling from inside the temple because i'm trying to think when you look at the reconstruction of the temple there's no throne room in there um, I mean, unless somebody's going to sit on a mercy seat, and if you do that, then that's a chance to Torah. You're going to be put to death oh, yeah. uh, because that's where the, the presence of Yah dwells for oracle purposes, right? So the question is, if he's sitting and ruling on a throne from the temple, then you have to first show uh, where this is taking place. Second, you have to show, it, does he have any successors? And if so, are they also ruling on the throne? Well, um, we because... The sovereignty of Israel was removed at this point. They don't have sovereignty at this point, right? They're subservient to the Persian kingdom, right? So they don't have any sovereignty. So they, they, they've not, there's no sense of a king. Unless you're saying that this language here is figurative and you're saying it's not literal, just figurative, where it's talking about sitting and ruling. Yeah. It means that he's going to take charge in yeah, some way, shape, or form. In regard, I mean, you'd have to, you have to say that. Yeah, 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 and, and, and I and I would have no problem. I would have no problem okay. looking at it in that way because I mean no 13, problem. 13 is very clear. It says, even he shall build a temple of the most high, and he shall bear the glory, and shall sit and rule upon his throne, and he shall be a priest upon his throne, and the council of priests shall be between them both. And then it talks about crowning in verse 14, and the crown shall be to Halem and Tobiah and to Jed Jedediah and to Han and the son of Zeph Zephaniah. Mm -hmm. And those are all the people who were listed earlier. So we see them all connected here. So I don't see how they could be separated. All this is so you, but yeah. you would see this. Um, you you wouldn't compare this to any other text outside of Zechariah, where it mentions the branch and rebuilding of the temple. Um, I had I had a PowerPoint. I honestly, I studied I studied this and I had some PowerPoint slides and connections. I couldn't find it. I don't know. I'm gonna have to go back and look at no this problem. video. Uh, yeah, look at this video and check some of my notes. Mm -hmm. to see what else I found, but um, for right now, I just wanted to point this out because I, I'm looking and I'm seeing the fulfillment of this, but I do, I do notice that, um, you know, there are even other prophecies that are so associated with the New Testament Messiah Yeshua, 
Mm-hmm. And I was I was recently a believer in the New Testament until I started doing some real deeper studies on the prophecies. Mm-hmm. And then I started to really see a disconnect to where prophecies that were attached to Yeshua had completely nothing to do with him. And I think one of the brothers mentioned earlier, mm-hmm. he mentioned uh, Isaiah chapter 7. There's right. plenty more. There's um, Micah 5, 2. There's, mm-hmm. there's many more uh, prophecies that literally were already fulfilled in their time periods. And then they're all of a sudden being associated with the Messiah. So those are the problems that I've had. Um, but I tried to, I wanted to just address this one that you brought up just to, just to respect you and, you know, the, what, what you put together today. Yeah, 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 definitely. And, and I appreciate your feedback. And like I said, I'm, I'm familiar with that position <clears throat> and also the people who are, are, who are dissidents from a previous position based on your understanding. So with me understanding all of that, um, and still looking at the person of Yeshua, what am I seeing, right? Because remember I said, there's a biblical Yeshua, there's a historical Yeshua. The objective is to try to find harmony between the two if it exists at all, right? And this is something that uh, scholars have been doing for a long period of time. And there's tons of work on that, where a lot of things you're saying have already been harmonized, right? So a lot of people are just not exposed to those positions. So when you see things like that, it seems disjointed, it seems misapplied. Like the brother Ezra was saying, but in actuality, it's not, because um, again, have you read commentaries on Zechariah by external sources that were contemporary to that time and came a little bit later? Because they actually have old traditions in regards to their commentary on how they understood within this context during their time period. Yeah, no, I haven't. I haven't uh, looked too much at um, uh, commentary and stuff like that because. To be honest, like I feel my personal, uh, you know, um, opinion on commentary is that it can be biased, you know, towards somebody's beliefs. You know, they can they can try to squeeze things and fit things in. For instance, you know, especially reading the New Testament, you see that a lot where, where you'll see, oh, here the, the dietary was, you know, this is when the dietary law was thrown out or you'll see certain things like that. So I really try to just pray and meditate on the word and examine it myself. Think about the culture as, as I know it to be. You know, and, and understand it, and then just try to put put two and two together. You know, I don't I don't think it's too complex. Um, no, I feel you. Yeah. So, so my last my last thing I'll say to you, unless you go, because this is getting a little long in the tooth. Not your fault. <laughs> but, no, I know, um, man. You the late night. You the late night. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so when I, when, I, when I read the scripture earlier in uh, Jeremiah, mm-hmm. um, who was that to you in Jeremiah chapter twenty three, three to six? Who's that? Um. Do you believe know. that? Do you, do you believe David would be resurrected and reinstalled as the king over Israel? That's a good one. Um, that's a good question because a lot of people, uh, I, I know some people that believe that David is going to be resurrected. He's going to be raised up, as it talks to you know my save, my servant David. But Israel or, is also known as Jacob, so it can be figuratively speaking about somebody else who's going to come from the lineage of, of David, um, who's going to yeah who's going to come from his lineage or his seed passed on. Um, so that, that's a, that's a interesting. So, so you don't believe that is literally there. And you said that that could be figurative, but you do take Zachariah six literal, right? Yeah, I take, well, see, and that's the thing. I, I got to look back at that again. Um, but it's interesting just because I, I think the way it's, uh, spoken about, and I think the difference between Zachariah is now you're looking at something that we see later on spoken about is fulfillment. Like I pointed out in Ezra, we see that the the temple was was built according to that, and that was literally connected to Zechariah, him building the temple, uh, 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 Joshua building the temple. So I see that being fulfilled, and literally because of of the you know the things that that come out in, as other witnesses. But when we talk about um, Jeremiah, me myself, I'm still researching the whole my servant David and. And stuff like that because mm-hmm. I, I think that's a really interesting um perspective you know talking to you know people talking about david's going to be resurrected i think that's i find that fascinating but i'm not clinging i haven't clinged on to that understanding yet um to say david's okay. going to be resurrected from the from the dead yeah. no know, problem so. no problem so i'm gonna i'm gonna get up out of here my brother so i don't fall asleep on camera i appreciate your time and your insight as always I surprise you up at 3.52 in the morning. I praise to the most high. <laughs> you know, it's, one, it's 152 where I'm at. Oh, it's an hour. Oh, two hours behind. Okay, so you you straight. 
Um, but um, but yeah, thank you for your time, my brother. Like I said, you're you're welcome anytime in the future. Come on here, share your new discoveries, and let me know. So I know from the times in the past when I spoke to you, what you're saying now is completely different. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah, man, so it's always good to hear that journey and for me to support you in any way that I can and also give dialogue to ensure that whatever you walked away from before was thoroughly inspected before making a, a steady decision. So no problem. So I love you, my brother. Thank you for coming on and I'm going to speak to you again, okay? I love you too, brother. Be increased, man. Be you too, man. All right. <clears throat> All right, family. So you guys pretty much heard it. Um, once again, uh, just real quick, though, I want to give a shout out again to uh, Brother Ron. Thank you for having me on, brother. Uh, all the work you do is, is greatly appreciated and admired um, as you are one who is allowing the light to shine um, of the Most High's chosen people. So once again, I just want to thank you for having me on. Um, and for those uh, who heard, you know, pretty much you've seen how um, Brother Ron, he, he couldn't, there was nothing he could really um, deny as far as my interpretation of Zechariah um, and the fulfillment of the prophecy. You know, he couldn't, he couldn't say, you know, well, this is out of context or that is out of context, you know, and so I just wanted to bring that forward because it's so important, um, you know, as we uh, have these kinds of discussions, you know, to make sure that we are standing on um, sound doctrine right, that we are standing on sound doctrine. And so as you can see, a brother who is who is well known in the uh, community and is a well read and studied scholar, you know, into uh, his beliefs, you know, and, and the Hebrew culture and mindset, you know, of course, he's more messianic, but, you know, I'm not going to allow that to um, disrupt a chance to build with, with my brothers, um, you know, and to also test my doctrine as well, right. And so, now, just what I want to do is, um, because I know you guys were hearing us talk about scripture and you weren't seeing the scripture. So what I'm going to do now, I just want to go over the scriptures. So, um, you know, confirming my position on Zacharias chapter three and, and, and chapter six for you. So that way you have a clear understanding of exactly why I believe what I believe. All right. So we're going to start with Zechariah chapter three, and I'm going to try to do this very quick so I, I don't um, make this video too long. All right. So starting in chapter three, reading verses one through 10, it says, and the most high showed me uh, Yahshua, Yeshua, Yahweh Shai, Jesus, the high priest standing before the angel of the most high and the devil stood on his right hand to resist him. Now, the first thing I want to point out here is that in the uh, conversation we had, brother Ron had said that um, in chapter three is where we see uh, Joshua right or yeshua made the high priest right and one thing i want to acknowledge here is that uh the first thing we have to look at in verse one it says and the most high showed me all right uh yashua the high priest standing before the angel of the most high so this was a vision um i can't say that this was the actual moment when he was made the high priest but um, in this vision, it was a sign that he was going to be the high priest. So if we're talking like literally, I wouldn't say that it happened. If we're talking figuratively, we could say, okay, this is the moment the Most High was acknowledging him as the high priest. So when it comes to the literal sense, I can't say at this moment he was made high priest because this was a vision that Zechariah um, was given, right? So it says, and the Most High showed me Yahshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Most High, and the devil stood on his right hand to resist him. So the fact that the devil is standing on his right hand to resist him is another sign that this is a vision, right? And then it says, and the Most High said to the devil, the Most High rebuked thee, O devil, even the Most High that has chosen Jerusalem rebuked thee. Behold, is not this as a brand plucked from the fire? Now, Yahshua was clothed in filthy raiment and stood before the angel and the most high answered and spoke to those who stood before him saying take away the filthy raiment from him and he said unto him behold i have taken away thine iniquities all right so for those who think that this is related to yeshua of the new testament a clear sign that this is not is he says i have taken away thine iniquities right and for those who have believed uh had believed or still believe in yeshua of the new testament 
All right, we were taught that he had you no know, iniquities. All right, so this definitely couldn't be referring to him. And then it continues to say, and clothe you him with a long robe and place a pure mitra upon his head. So they place a pure mitra upon his head and clothe him with garments and the angel of the most high stood by. And the angel of the most high testified to Yahshua or Yeshua uh, saying, thus saith the most high almighty, uh, if thou wilt walk in my ways and take heed to my charges, then shalt thou judge my house. And if thou wilt diligently keep my court, then will I give thee men to walk in the midst of these that stand here. Hear you now, Yahshua the high priest, thou and thy neighbors that are sitting before thee, for they are diviners. For behold, I bring forth my servant, the branch. All right. And this is where um the you know we see the branch being used and some may start associating this with the new testament messiah all right but uh let's continue reading and then i'll, I'll bring my my stance on that uh for as for the stone which i have set before the face of yashua on the stone are seven eyes behold i am digging a trench saith the most high almighty and i will search out all the the iniquities of that land in one day in that day saith the most high almighty you shall call together every man his neighbor under the vine and under the fig tree. All right. So you guys have seen already first my, my stance that this was a vision. Right. And now I'm just going to confirm that <clears throat> with the next uh, chapter in verse one, uh, chapter four, verse one. All right. It says uh, chapter four, verse one uh, through three, it says, and the angel that talked with me returned and awakened me as when a man is awakened out of his sleep. All right. So this to me was just confirmation that he was having a vision. All right. As it starts off, it says, and the angel. So just connecting the last chapter we just read with this. All right. So, so there's no separation here. All right. So, and the angel talked with me uh, and the angel that talked with me returned and awakened me as when a man is awakened out of his sleep. And he said to me, what seest thou? All right. So he's clearly having a vision. And the angel is now asking him, what did you see, right? All right, it continues to say, and I said, I have seen and beheld a candlestick, all of gold and its bowls upon it and seven lamps upon it and seven oil funnels to the lamps upon it and two olive trees above it, one on the right of the bowl and one on the left. All right, so we just, we kind of see the um, fulfillment of a vision right here we see the vision right so now now that we had that understood we see kind of the prophecy of uh uh joshua be going to be made a high priest all right now we're going to go in uh to zechariah chapter six and we're going to see the fulfillment of this this vision all right so starting with uh verses nine through fifteen uh it says and the word of the most high came to me saying take the things of the captivity from the chief men and from the useful men of it and from them that have understood it and thou shalt enter in that day into the house of Josias the son of Zephaniah that came out of Babylon and thou shalt take silver and gold and make crowns and thou shalt put them upon the head of Yahshua or Yeshua the son of Josedek the high priest all right so here we see um this is the moment where the Most High is commanding Zechariah to make, uh, to crown um, Yeshua, Joshua, Jesus, the son of Josedek, the high priest, right? This is when he's being crowned. So this was my stance when I was saying that it was being fulfilled is because at this point, we were seeing him being crowned. The Most High was commanding Zechariah to crown him, all right? It says in verse 12, and thou shalt say to him, thus saith the Most High Almighty, Behold, the man whose name is the branch. So now this name, the branch, is being uh, uh, attached to Josh, <clears throat> Joshua or Yeshua, right? Now this, this name, the branch, is being uh, attached to him, right? And then it says, and he shall spring up from his stem and build the house of the Most High. So now it's associating him building the house or building the temple of the Most High, all right? And then it says, and he shall receive power and shall sit upon and shall sit and rule upon his throne. And there shall be a priest uh, on his right hand and a peaceable council shall be between them both. 
All right. So we kind of see right here, boom, Joshua has been, been, uh, Zechariah has been directed, yo, go make Joshua the ruler. All right. So this is why I say here's the fulfillment of that prophecy and the branch as he was being titled. It, this is being handed over to Joshua. This, this title is being handed uh, to Joshua by the Most High. All right. So that's the first portion, right? We see that now. In verse 14, it says, and the crown shall be to them that wait patiently and to the useful men of the captivity and to them that have known it and for the favor of the son of Zephaniah and for a psalm uh, in the house of the Most High. Okay, so now these people right here, notice that these people were the same people. When we go back to verse nine, it says, and the word of the Most High came to me saying, take the things of the captivity from the chief men and from the useful men of it and from them that have understood. So the useful men, notice back, uh, what we just read here, the useful men, right? He said, and the crown shall be to them that wait patiently and to the useful men of the captivity and to them that have known it, all right? So these are the same people that um, now down here or, or previously, right? In, in verse 9, these are the same people take to the, them the things of the captivity from the chief men and from the useful men um, of it and from them that have understood it. <clears throat> so we're seeing here, these are the men that are being crowned, right? Now, when we look at the KJV, this is what is said in the KJV. Um, as you guys know, I read from the Brenton Greek Septuagint, but um, during this uh, interview um, or the, during this session that we had, I should say, um, I read from the KJV just to help those that are already reading from the KJV. Um, but it said, and the word of the Most High came to me saying, take of them of the captivity, even Heldai, uh, even of Heldai, of Tobiah, and of Jed Jediah, which are come from Babylon, and come down the same day and go into the house of Josiah, the son of Zephaniah, right? So these are the people that um, Zechariah is being commanded, right, to take right and and um to take to the house of of zephaniah or i'm sorry the house of josiah right so notice all these names we got tobiah and of jed and of jediah right which are come from babylon now when he talks about the crowning again in verse 14 and the crown shall be to halem and to tobiah and to jediah and to Han the son of zephaniah so these people were listed previously so it just shows you that all this is connected together, that the men who Zechariah was told to um, take with him are the same men also receiving crowns, all right? And it says, for a memorial in the, in the temple of the Most High, all right? So all this is connected, right? All this is connected together, all right? And in verse 15, it says, and they that are far from them shall come and build in the house of the most high and you shall know that the almighty uh the most high almighty has sent me to you and this shall and this shall come to pass if you will diligently hearken to the voice of the most high your power or your god your creator all right so he said here if you will do uh all this shall come to pass if you will diligently hearken unto the voice of the most high right so He's saying, notice what he said, all this shall come to pass. Not some of this. He said, all of this shall come to pass, right? So we see Zechariah being commanded to, to crown um, Yahshua. We see him being uh, commanded to crown uh, these other individuals. And we see that Joshua is to build um, the, the house of the Most High or the temple, right? So just to confirm uh, that all this happened it says in, in ezra 6 14 and the elders of the jews and the levites built at the prophecy of agus or haggai in the kjv the prophet and zacharias the son of edo or ado and they built up and finished it by the decree of the most high of israel right so and then it says and by the decree of cyrus and darius and uh artaxerxes or artaxerxes uh, kings of the Persians. So at this point, we're seeing this whole entire prophecy come to fulfillment, right? Because 
the uh, building of the temple was associated with Yeshua or Joshua, um, all right, the high priest. It was associated with him. So the fact that they said uh, they built and finished it by the decree of the Most High of Israel means that they obeyed everything, right? Because the last thing he told them is that, and this shall come to pass if you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Most High. And now we see here that it has come to pass, all right? So we see a complete fulfillment of this. That's my stance that <clears throat> this branch in um, Zechariah chapter 6 is talking about Yahshua, all right, uh, Yeshua, all right, Jesus, as I said, all right, reading from the Brent and Greek Septuagint, all right, so um, this has been fulfilled, all right, and, and once again, through, through my conversation with Brother Ron, uh, Divine Prospect, he couldn't, you know, he couldn't deny it, you know, he couldn't deny and say, oh, no, you're wrong, you know, he, he actually said, you know, I see, I see you're, in, I see and understand that perspective, right, so just showing you that this is, um, you know, this understanding of these biblical prophecies being complete uh, in their time, and of course, you know, searching it out to see who fulfilled the prophecies, this is a very important task that we have to do these days to make sure that we're not following um, strange doctrine or um, false doctrine, right? Created by those that don't love us, those that want to keep us oppressed and in submission to them. Um, you know, and when we talk about uh, commentary, as the brother asked me about commentary, you know, when I look at commentary, you know, it's very important to think like, is there an agenda behind those? Like some may say, nah, like the Jews have a, um, they have a, a straightforward agenda. You know, um, I personally, you know, I, I can't say that I, you know, I believe that. Um, I believe that, you know, there's a lot of people that have a reason to deceive the most high uh, people, you know, to keep them in submission and subject to them as long as we're in sin. So when we are acknowledging another individual, right, who I believe has not come, right, or, or did not exist, um, I believe he was a fabrication um, by the Romans to teach ways that were against the ways of the most high to make us passive um, individuals or to make the other nations hate the Jews as you know according to New Testament you see uh, you know Yeshua, Yesiah, Jesus, Yahweh Shai, you see him what it looks like for the most part he's keeping the commandments and teaching them right and and the Jews then came and killed him because he was breaking commandments you know that was their their reason for uh, you know for uh, crucifying him in the New Testament, that he was breaking commandments, which we actually see him do uh, in regards to the Sabbath and other things. But um, they make uh, the nations, the Gentiles hate the Jews because now they say, oh, the Jews, they just didn't want to believe in this, this and that, and the Jews, and they killed our Savior and this, this and that, making people, using the New Testament to make people hate the Jews. All right. And so I'm not, for me, that just, you know, knowing the, the position that the Romans had uh, in, in terms of how they viewed the ways of the Most High, and they viewed the, the uh, Jews, the Yahudim, keeping his his commandments, right? The Yahunde keeping his commandments. They despised their ways because they were heathens who lived and and did things that were unclean and and abominable things. And and to see people who live a, a more righteous and clean life, you know, to them it was it was an abomination. So um, they have a reason to fabricate things to make people hate the Jews, right? I'm just gonna say it like that, all right? But anyways, uh, you know, you guys have seen my position. You've seen exactly why I believe what I believe. And you've seen that um, Brother Ron really couldn't find any objections to it. You know, he really couldn't find any objections to it because the, the scripture speaks loud and clear for itself, all right? So with that being said, my brothers and sisters, thank you for watching, all right? Um, Please subscribe, like, and share this video, you know, that others may be edified by it. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to email me at wayeverlasting 8 at gmail.com. All right. So my family, uh, be increased. May the Most High continue to increase you in all truth, wisdom, and understanding. And may he provide and protect you in these times that we are in. All right, my brothers so and sisters. My brothers and sisters, so until next time, family, 
be increased.